Well, hello. Um, welcome to the pumpkin paint along. Uh, my name is Allie and I um, am a painting instructor. I teach how to um, use loose, bold brushwork um, using fluid acrylic paint and I teach online classes. I also teach um, live workshops here at my studio in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and every week I bring you a little demo painting. Um, so it's actually been a couple of weeks since we have gathered to do this. Um, some of you that are watching uh, probably know that this pumpkin paint along was supposed to happen two weeks ago, right when Facebook crashed. So. <laughs> I was here, I was waiting for Facebook to just come on back and it didn't. So we had to reschedule this paint along, um, but I'm glad that you guys were patient and that you were willing to um, come and join me this week. Last week we did not have a paint along because I was visiting family in Seattle. So um, my kids have a, a week off for fall break every year. So we went out and visited my sister-in-law. So anyways, here I am. I'm glad that you are here. Um, and please uh, feel free to jump into the comments, say hello, um, let us all know where you're watching from. It's always fun to see. Um, and also let me know if you're painting with me. So quick rundown, I always like to go through this as we're starting off the demos of how this works. So these demos are totally free to watch. Um, I do an eight by 10 sample every week. We've been kind of working in a series. We're kicking off this new fall series with the pumpkins. Um, but I also offer a download that you can print on your home printer um, that has the image scaled to eight by 10 and I give you the outlines that I'm going to use so that you can trace those onto your panel. So if that's something you're interested in, you can find that on my website, alliekstudio.com. You can also find the downloads from all my previous paint-alongs. Um, so you can go back and take advantage of those and watch the replay, which is pretty cool. Um, so real quick, I do want to let you guys know that the 2021 paint-alongs are only going to be available through the end of the year. So if you go on my website and you see some that you wanna grab, Take advantage of those $10 paint alongs before they disappear, all right? I know some of you have done all of them, but there are a lot, there's like 40 of them. So um, you might wanna go in and, and grab a few of those. All right, let's get started, okay? Um, so like I mentioned, we've got the uh, pumpkins here. This is the image we are working with. Um, hi Kelly, hi Janine and Laura. You guys are watching from all over. Welcome, welcome. I'm just gonna pull this up here on my computer so that I can watch your comments as we are going through this demo. So I can see what y'all have to say and hopefully uh, be able to respond with that. Oh, my computer's being slow. All right, we're just gonna get started. So I mentioned we've got the outlines. What I did is I went in and painted over these outlines using my skinny little script liner brush. Skinny little brush like this. And I made a light purple um, from Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and White. And I am using Golden Fluid Acrylics. Um, if you get the download, you have a list of the colors that I use. I don't use very many colors. Um, I mix all my colors using just a handful of um, golden paints. So I, I, uh, I like to let you know which are the most important ones to get. And if you get the paints I recommend, you should be able to mix any color with them. Okay, so we've got the outlines on here. Um, and we're gonna get started with mapping out the shadows. This is part of the underpainting process. Um, so we're going to start by making a purple with a lizard and crimson and Payne's gray, and I'm just watering it down. And I am using flat tip brushes uh, by Royal Langnickel. These are not expensive brushes. Um, I actually buy a huge pack of them and it comes out to be a dollar brush. It's really great. Um, so I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make a bigger puddle of this. Um, and 
Once I've got my big soupy puddle there, I'm gonna scrape my brush on the edge of my palette to offload it. And then I'm gonna go back with just the tip of my brush to scoop up some of this wet mixture that I've got going here. Um, hi Pam in London, hi Tina, hi Judy, welcome everybody, glad you made it. Okay, so we're gonna look at the dark shapes and that's what we're gonna start filling in so we can tell right away that we've got this dark stem right here. And this is just the first pass of this dark. So we're going to come back and darken this a little bit more later, but we're just gonna start off by kind of taking the darker 50% of the shapes and just washing those in. So we're looking at the lines and we're asking ourselves which side of the line is light and which side is dark. Um, got a dark little chunk there. Now up here, we've got the bottom of this pumpkin, which is darker. And moving over to here, the pumpkin behind is darker. Just a little bit darker. Dark shape right there. And notice how far back I am holding my brush. Um, you don't wanna be choked up on your brush like this. This is where we wanna stay fluid with our brush strokes, hold the brush further back. Takes a little bit of practice, getting a steady hand but um, it definitely pays off in the end. It helps you to um, work more quickly and it also helps you to stay a little bit looser and not get hung up on all those little details. And this pumpkin is a little darker than the one that's in front of it here, so I'm gonna wash that in. Now when we get down here, there's a dark shadow underneath the dark pumpkin. So I'm actually gonna treat those pretty much the same. This is all dark here. And then in our next pass, we'll come back and we'll separate those two values. You see what I mean there? How that line is just kind of getting eaten up by this dark shadow. I'm not worried about that. We'll be able to separate those later. We're really generalizing forms. Um, I feel like so much of painting is really just about generalizing. And you know what? I'm gonna wash over this one too. So we've got this hunk of this little pumpkin right there, but I'm not gonna separate that one right now. I'm just gonna call that whole area shadow. It's all about deciding what to include, what to separate, and what just to group together um, when we are doing these paintings. So we've got a bright edge right here of this pumpkin and then it's dark behind it. So I'm gonna wash in dark behind that one. Hi Sharon in Clifton, Tennessee and Karen in Alabama. All right, and this, this section is all pretty dark too. Got dark on this side of this line. And notice when I did my outlines that I didn't put like every single little crease in the pumpkins. I really only identified those creases that stood out the most to me. If I had put every single one, my outlines template would have been so busy and it would have been really hard to tell what are the important outlines and what are the outlines that are just identifying all these little tiny veins. So when you are doing this on your own, like doing your own sample painting and you're trying to figure out how to make the outlines, what to transfer and what not to, just think to yourself, like this is a roadmap. You don't need every single anchor point. You just need the ones that are gonna help you know what the major shapes are. Like if someone is giving you directions somewhere and they say, you know, look for the church on the corner, they're, they're not gonna tell you every single building you're gonna pass. They're just gonna tell you those major landmarks. Um, and that's kind of a good way to think about transferring these outlines. You just need the major landmarks whether that be um, a major highlight or a major um, shadow. You know, I kind of left out this little pumpkin that's right here. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna make this whole area dark because it's gonna be too busy otherwise. I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna simplify that up there. 
Um, let's see. Sophia said, I hope you keep this session recorded. Can't watch it now. Do not worry, Sophia. All my paint alongs are available afterwards. So it is, it's fun to watch it live. And I love the people who um, make a point to do that. But I understand that you can't always be with me live. So um, you can find the, uh, the recorded um, paint alongs on my website, alleykstudio.com, under paint alongs, and you'll see links there to all the replays. So we put these on my YouTube channel, and then they're also listed on my Facebook page as replays. So no worries there. Um, and I mentioned before that, uh, you know, the downloads are only going to be available to purchase through the end of the year, the 2021 paint alongs. However, the videos are going to stay available. So you just won't be able to download the outlines after uh, the end of this year. But if you want to stock up on some outlines, um, you can certainly do that. And then you can go watch the videos at your convenience. Fill in that little triangle there. There we go. I'm just going to go that whole section. We'll separate that stem out a little bit more later. All right, moving along, let's do this big stem. Helps us to find that anchor point. And got a little section there. Got this stem right here. I have a little bit more alizarin crimson in my purple mixture here, but it really doesn't matter. Um, I like to use this color as my shadow when I'm starting out, and it, I use it for really pretty much anything. It doesn't matter what color the thing is that I'm painting. I will still um, use this kind of dull purple mixture um, to find my shadows in this first pass because all of this is going to get buried. We're going to put so much color on top of this later. Um, but this is just helping us to separate those shapes, identify what's what. We're going to fill all that in. Got a dark shape right here. Huh. Must have like some grease or something on my panel there. You see how the paint is kind of separating? Um, once I start to uh, add in thicker paint, it won't bead up like that. But because this paint is very watered down, sometimes that happens if there's like, you know, a fingerprint or something on the panel, but I'm not worried about it. All right. Put a dark shape in here, and then we're almost done with this first pass. All right, this is all pretty light there. We'll put a little shadow in right here. A little bit up here. Okay, so let's see. I think we'll call this first pass done. Okay, now we're gonna go back, like I mentioned. First, add a little more. <laughs> um, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna push the dark areas a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the same color recipe. I'm still going to use alizarin crimson in Payne's Gray, but now I'm going to have less water in there. I'm still gonna have a little bit of water, but um, it'll be, this new color is going to be a few notches darker than what I've already put down. All right, so let's look for the darkest shapes first. So to me, these stems really stand out as the darkest, so I'm just gonna pull those out right away. Um, I always like to kind of start with what's easy. Whenever you feel a little bit lost in a painting, uh, not sure what to do, always just pick something easy first. Pick the easy things to do, and then um, it's interesting because once you accomplish some of those easy things, some of those shapes that you're really sure about and you know exactly where they are and how dark they should be, um, then it helps you to identify some of those like maybe more mysterious shapes 
um, that are a little bit harder to find because you've got those anchor points um, really clearly identified. So kind of starting with these stems. Those are easy to find. What else is dark? We've got this dark shadow under that pumpkin that I talked about kind of using, we are gonna separate that later, how those, those shapes kind of blended together before, and I said, well, we're gonna separate those, so didn't have to worry about it. And let's see, we've got some dark shapes in here. This stem down here, dark shadow. So by building up these shadows first, it gives me a really nice base to layer on top of. So in general, I like to put light over dark. So that's why I build up the darks first, because then when I start putting more opaque layers of paint, it's kind of like frosting. Like you can just lay them on top of the nice base that's there, and it's just going to look really rich, kind of setting on top of it. Um, it's kind of like if you think about, I don't know if anybody is a pastel artist, if you've ever worked with like chalk pastels, but you know how Oftentimes, chalk pastel artists will work on a piece of paper that is toned, um, usually like a slightly darker piece of paper. Every now and then they might work on white, but usually it's a darker piece. And the, the, there's a, the same reason kind of applies to the way that I'm approaching this acrylic painting, that the acrylic paints are just gonna kind of sit down nicer and pop a little bit more when we're layering it on top of a slightly darker base. So that's, that's kind of the reason for building up these shadows. And then we're also going to put down a complementary color wash after we've built up these shadows. And you'll be able to see um, some of the benefits of that as well. Um, and then having these shadows down before we do the wash, that helps us to still be able to identify our shapes and not get them lost because we've already kind of really nicely placed them in our piece. And this, uh, this painting could get a little confusing if you, if you don't have these nice anchor points. There's kind of a lot of shapes going on that are all mixed together. So these anchor points are, are really gonna be important to know what's what here. Especially in these stages where, you know, it's all the same color. We don't wanna get lost. And uh, let me know, guys, if you have any questions. I do have uh, my screen pulled up next to me here, so I am kind of watching your comments as we go. And I always try to answer any questions that I'm able to um, as I'm working here. So. Let me know what you're thinking. All right, I think, uh, I think this looks pretty good. I think we're ready to start washing in some color. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so complementary color under painting. So the, um, the stems are all kind of like bluish green. I'm gonna find those first. So opposite of green is red. Um, and instead of putting red down, I'm going to put quinacridone magenta because I love it. Um, so that's what we're gonna use. Uh, it's one of my favorite colors from Golden. So I'm gonna put some here on my palette and I'm going to add some water to it. Uh, Jacqueline says, watching from work, hope to paint tomorrow. Happy painting. Thank you, Jacqueline. I hope you have fun tomorrow. Um, let's see, Jolan says, where can I buy the other templates? You can buy those on my website. It's Allie K Studio. Allie is spelled A-L-I, K and K is spelled K-A-Y. So AllieKStudio.com. And if you look under instruction and paint alongs, you will find all of my previous paint alongs. 
and there are a lot to pick from. And then each one um, will have a link to that replay. And you can also just go on the website um, and you can watch all the replays there too. So I'm just washing over these areas that I see are going to be green and I'm not being real careful about it. I'm being kind of sloppy and I'm doing that on purpose. I wanna be a little messy with this color. I want all these colors to play together. We've got some green in the background here, so I'm going to wash that in. And we'll put a little bit there. All right, I still have that water beating up right there. We'll take care of that later. All right, so now the rest of it is mostly orange, but we do have some kind of purple shadows that are popping in down here. And this color is showing up be not because it was in the photograph, but because I put a filter on this photo. So I like to put a filter on all my reference images. It just pulls out some more interesting colors. And I um, used a filter in the app PixArt that I really like, and this is the geode filter. Um, so that brought out that kind of purple tone. So I think just to give some variety in the base, rather than calling everything orange, I'm going to find those spots that look purple to me, and I'm going to put down a complement um, to those. Let's see, Karen said, is anyone else having trouble with the video stopping? It keeps telling me the live video has ended. Ooh, I don't know, I'm curious about that, Karen. My, I don't know if Debbie's having trouble too. Shoot, um, I hope it's not my internet connection. Um, we're gonna cross our fingers that this second try is gonna work. Um, I think every now and then when we have a little bit of a connection issue, uh, it's usually okay in the replay. So just in case um, it's real bad, you guys might have to watch this as a replay, but I'm just gonna cross my fingers that it's gonna be okay. Um, let's see, Janet, you got kicked out of it. Let's see, Christine said hers works perfectly. Okay, you guys update me if it's still like really bad. And um, let's see, Kathy said getting a real quick drop. Shoot, all right. Um, Sarah said it's pausing, picks back up without losing content. Okay, oh gosh, Facebook, what are we gonna do with you? All right, let's go back to that underpainting. I appreciate you guys letting me know about that. All right, so the areas that are purple, I'm gonna put an opposite color down. The opposite of purple is basically like a yellow tone. Um, so I'm going to make kind of a dark yellow. Um, I don't wanna do bright yellow. I'm gonna to tone it down a little bit. So I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Opaque and I am going to put a little bit of alizarin crimson in there and just a tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Gray. So it's Hansa Yellow Opaque, alizarin crimson, and just a speck of Payne's Gray. It's going to make kind of a dark golden purple for us. And we're gonna drop that into the areas where we see a purple shadow. Teresa said it works fine for her. Hmm. All right. Uh, Marilyn's asking what size canvas. Um, this is an eight by 10 uh, wood panel that I'm working on, Marilyn. Okay, so again, let's go back, find those purple areas. So down here is going to be purple. We're gonna wash this gold color in there. Over here is gonna be purple. I'm gonna drop the gold in over there. It's gonna be purple over here. A little bit of purple there. And just put a little in there for fun. Okay, so now the rest of it is going to ultimately be bright orange. So we're gonna pick the opposite color of orange, which is kind of a bluish purple. And I think um, we're going to use Thalo Blue for that. We're gonna use Thalo Blue Green Shade, which is a real intense aqua color. It's one of my favorites. We're just gonna use that everywhere else. So everywhere else is going to get Thalo Blue Green Shade. 
And in some places it might mix in with that gold color. Don't worry about that, that's totally fine. Um, I like it when the colors play together. And I am doing this over, you'll notice, I'm doing it right over the shadows that we placed. So I'm not painting around those, I'm just going right on top of them and washing this color in. And I switched to a bigger brush when I did this. Janet says it's okay now, yay! My little prayer worked. <laughs> All right, continuing with this blue. I love this color as an underpainting. And I got into my yellow a little bit, and that's fine. So we keep the underpainting loose and that will allow us to continue staying loose as we start layering more color on top. around and now our next um, step we're going to want to have this underpainting be totally dry so I'm gonna try not to have any big super wet areas because I need to start layering paint on top of it I still have that little area that's beating up I have to get some thicker paint to cover that okay let's see go a little bit more so I don't like having any white canvas. I like having this dark base uh, to work on top of. It just makes the painting feel more finished sooner when you have a wash down for your base. I'm just catching any drips before I keep moving here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna hopefully have this dry pretty quick and then we're gonna move into the next step. So this is what I call the underpainting. So the underpainting is mapping out the shadows and then putting down the compl complementary color wash. And then we want that underpainting to be dry and then we're gonna start layering on top. So now um, as I continue with the next pass where I'm gonna start putting down the actual colors that I see, I am no longer going to thin my paint with water. Um, that was just for those early underpainting stages. I'm just scooping up the drips here. Um, now I'm going to thin my paint with glazing medium. So I am using Liquitex uh, matte medium and I like a satin finish. Um, you can use any brand, I'm not picky about that. I usually buy the Liquitex over the Golden because I feel like it doesn't really matter as much. Um, for paints, I always stick with Golden because it is the best. Um, all right, so the purpose of the glazing medium is to thin your paint to make it more transparent, but it keeps the body of the paint, and it also just kind of makes it stay luscious looking. All right, so the first color we put down for that underpainting was that magenta, and I feel like that area is dry now, so we can start layering over that. By the time we do that, then the rest of it should be dry. So we're gonna start with those darkest tones in the stems. We're gonna make a dark green, um, and we will make that dark green using Thalo Green Blue Shade, which is a super intense aqua green. And I'm gonna dull that down with some alizarin crimson. Now those two together are pretty much gonna make a black. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze in there to thin it out a little bit. And we're going to use this to push those darkest darks that we see in the reference image. So the darkest one I see is up at the top here. I'm just finding those very darkest shadows. I'm not covering up all of that magenta that I put down because um, I kind of like that little halo of it and I put it down there for a reason because I want some of that to poke through. I don't want to cover up everything just going to look for those darkest shapes in this one, map those out. We're going to put some more values of green in later, so I'm just looking for those very darkest values. Same thing over here. And I think finding these stems first as the anchor points, that helps if your 
um, panel feels a little bit busy, like you got a little confused, we're just gonna pull these anchor points out first and hopefully that will make sense of everything a little bit further. And back here, this one, this stem is not as dark as up here. So I'm gonna put one little dash of it here, but I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. We've got a few little bits of dark back here, but I don't wanna to put too much in. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit more alizarin crimson into it to make it less of a green and more of like a dark black. And I'm gonna put that super dark black shape in underneath that one big pumpkin in the front. We're gonna find that dark black shape and place that where it belongs. And we've also got this dark black shape on the other side that we're gonna put. So um, I always like to say that as long as your darkest darks and your lightest lights are in the correct places, it doesn't really matter what happens everywhere else because your painting is going to look accurate. So just keep that in mind. Like a lot of those midtones, you can be playful, you can kind of throw stuff down. Oops, I got a little messy there. Uh, kind of willy-nilly, but just make sure your darkest darks and your lightest lights are in the correct places. Um, got some more dark tones in here that we're gonna push a little bit darker. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to um, Put down some oranges. I don't want, I was gonna say we were gonna do the next greens, but I don't wanna do the greens just yet. I wanna get some orange in there. So we're gonna pick um, a dark orange. We're gonna start with a darker, kind of burnt orange tone, and then we'll build our way up to some of the lighter tones. So we will make our dark orange. Um, I'm gonna get a little more alizarin crimson because that's gonna be part of my recipe. I like to use alizarin crimson in my orange because it, it makes the orange not like a fiery orange. It kind of dulls it down a little bit and makes it feel more natural. So we're going to use a uh, Hansa Yellow Opaque and alizarin crimson. Make that nice mustardy dark orange. And we'll put this into some of the shadows to start out with. We'll definitely get brighter, but we're just gonna start with this dark shadow tone first. Um, let's see, Jolan said, are you using water to rinse your brush or just using different brushes? I'm just using water. I've got it right next to me here and I'm just, I'm rinsing and then I've got a rag on my lap that I'm wiping um, at the same time. All right, so let's find those shadows. I'm gonna just kind of start up at the top here. And now as I'm starting to put down the actual color of the pumpkins, or at least the actual dark shadow, I don't want to cover up all of my fun blue that I've already put down. So I'm, I'm definitely thinking about that. I'm not trying to cover everything up. I'm just starting to build up some color um, so that we can start to see what is going to be the shadows of the pumpkin and start just identifying the fact that these are indeed orange pumpkins and not blue ones. But we're still gonna let that blue kind of play around. So we got some of those dark shadows in. We'll put some in over here. Also notice that I am not blending this color in or like scrubbing it into the blue. I'm finding a shape and I'm just laying the color down, just dropping it in so that you can actually see those brush strokes. I like my paintings to look like they are made from paint using a brush. I am not trying to make them look like they are airbrushed or a photograph. Um, I want them to look authentic and realistic, but I still want it to look like they're made out of paint. And that, you know, that's me. That's what I like. All right. So just moving my way around, looking for dark shapes. 
leaving little windows of that underpainting showing through. And I also encourage you to, you know, move around your panel. Don't stay too long in one place because when you do, you have a tendency to overwork that place. But if you're consistently bopping around, um, that helps you to not put too much paint down in any one area. Because you can always go back to an area and decide you want to kind of make it come together a little bit more, add some more detail. But it's hard if you've overworked an area, if you've put just way too much paint down and you've covered up all that underpainting, it's really hard to bring it back. So by putting a little here and a little there, um, that helps you to kind of just control how much you've done, not get carried away. Because that happens to all of us. This whole area is pretty dark. probably need to make a little bit more of my mixture. So it was Hansi Yellow and Alizarin Crimson. Okay. And having those different tones down first for the underpainting, that kind of gives a lot of extra interest here as we're layering on top of it. Because this um, burnt orange color looks different depending on if I'm layering on top of that gold or if I'm layering on top of um, the blue. So it's fun to experiment with different colors of underpainting. And I usually say I do the complement. So if the top layer is going to be a warm tone, I'll put a cool tone down first. If the top layer is going to be a cool tone, then I'll start with a warm tone. But I don't stay loyal to always having the true opposite. I just kind of think a little bit about something that's going to contrast um, what colors I will ultimately be putting down. But you can play around with it. You could do a whole painting on top of a hot pink um, underpainting or the magenta. It doesn't have to always be exactly the opposite. And I definitely encourage you to play around with that because it's, it's fun to see how different colors look when they're layered on top of each other. It also kind of helps you to figure out what you like uh, by experimenting with different underpaintings. You don't always have to do you know, the colors I recommend. I like seeing uh, a lot of um, the experimentation that you guys do. Let's see, Kathy's asking, what was the gold color recipe? So the gold was Hansa Yellow Opaque, Payne's Gray, and Alizarin Crimson. It was just a speck of the Payne's Gray though. It was mostly the um, Alizarin Crimson and Hansa Yellow Opaque. All right, I think this is, this first pass is done. Okay, so we got our dark tones in. Um, I'm gonna wash off my brush, and now we're gonna make more of like a, more of a true orange color. Um, so we're gonna use a different red now uh, with our mixture. So we're going to use a little bit of pyrrole red uh, with our Hansa yellow. So let's see, we're gonna do Hansa yellow over here. We're gonna put a little bit of pyrrole red in it. Just gonna make a pretty bright orange. I'm trying to decide if I wanna put a little bit of white in there to make it slightly more opaque. I think I'm going to. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of white in there because otherwise it would be very transparent and the white gives it some opacity. It makes it a little bit more of a pastel orange, but I'm seeing some of that pastel orange in my piece, so I think it's okay. Um, I'm not gonna put any glaze in now though. I want this to stand on top of the blue a little more. So I'm gonna start layering this into some of those mid-tones.
And you can see how I'm thinking about the direction of the, the pumpkin forms as I'm laying down the brush strokes. Um, you know, I'm not going perpendicular to it. I'm kind of like laying the brush strokes down with the pumpkin to kind of encourage the eye to see those shapes. And this orange looks really cool on top of that blue. I'm really glad we did that. And we'll pop it out a little bit more as we do the next color that's going to have more white in it. Um, those highlights will really stand out. Yeah, this is fun. I'm trying to decide what to do for next week's paint along. I need to probably have that planned out by tomorrow. I was thinking about doing a skeleton. Um, so if you guys, let me know what you guys think. What do you think about doing a skeleton paint along? Do you like, I was thinking like probably a skull, not a whole skeleton, because I don't think we have time. But let me know in the comments if you think that would be a uh, fun and you would like to do that. Or if you have any other suggestions. But I think since this will be the last one before Halloween, um, I thought something really spooky might be fun. Pam says skull. I think a skull would be fun. I can't believe it's almost Halloween. I'm excited. It's like my favorite holiday. I love, um, I love getting dressed up for Halloween and getting my kids dressed up in costumes. It's so much fun. Um, Pam says sugar skull with flowers. Kathy says bowl of candy. Ooh, that's a good idea too. I didn't think about that, Kathy. I like that too. You guys have good ideas. Right, so this is definitely helping to identify these as pumpkins and not blue. Uh, although it kind of makes me think of the teal pumpkin project, which um, my family is kind of involved in for kids who have food allergies. If you see a teal pumpkin outside of um, a house, it means that they have safe trick-or-treating options for kids with food allergies, which is really important to some people in my family, and I think that's pretty cool. Those kiddos want to have fun, too. Um, Wendy said, how about a jack-o'-lantern on porch steps with a candle glowing inside, uh, a lantern next to it? Well, that sounds great. I'm not sure if I can do all of that in one hour, but you never know. <laughs> I try, I try to keep these paint alongs uh, pretty simplified because I tried to do it in just one hour and I know it's a lot to paint. I need to get myself a little more paint, so I'm gonna mix a little more up here. I'll see what images I can find. Um, I usually use images from unsplash.com, which is a free to use photo sharing website. I try to use images that are um, not copyrighted, and so that website is a good resource to find free to use images. And then I always play around with them and kind of make them my own with some editing before I send them over to be a paint along. All right, so I mixed up a little more of this paint. I keep moving along. Trying to make sure I leave enough of my underpainting. It's getting a little bit busy, but I think when I do the next pass of orange, that will help to separate these shapes a little bit so that I can tell what's what again, because I feel like it's getting a little chaotic. Yours might be too. It's okay. We're going to bring it together. 
Uh, Kathy asks, what website? It's called Unsplash, like U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H, unsplash.com. And it's, it's great. Um, yeah, there's lots and lots of terrific images. And what I like about it is that you can search by, um, you know, by the specific image that you're looking for. I know there are like some Facebook groups that photographers will post, you know, free reference images, but you can't really search those, or at least I don't think you can. Um, so that's the nice thing about Unsplash is you can go look for exactly what you need. But I always think it is a good idea to, you know, change it up, make it your own. Don't try to make it exactly like that photographer's photo. And, you know, what's the point in doing that anyways? The photo is already out there. So, again, this recipe that I have on my brush here is pie roll red light, Hansa yellow opaque, and just a speck of titanium white. So this is the kind of brighter, more popping orange that I've got on my brush here right now. And I don't have any glaze in here because I want this to stand out pretty well against that blue background. I think if I put glaze in it, it would end up looking too green because so much of that blue would be shining through. So I'm not putting any glaze in right now. The yellow is transparent enough, even though it's Hansa yellow opaque, so it's more opaque than other yellows. Um, yellow is just still a really transparent color. So, all right. I think let's oh we need a little bit more over here a little bit of orange there and right there okay I think that's pretty good we got a lot of it filled in um, Janet said do you sell CDs with a few videos on of paint uh, a few videos on of painting on um, no I do not sell CDs Janet but I do um, I offer full online classes where you can have all of the videos which are all like professionally recorded and you have everything to go with it but as far as the paint alongs um, it's free to watch all of my paint alongs on my website you can see links to all of them and then you can just buy the downloads for whichever ones you want. And you might have missed it earlier. We mentioned that um, the downloads for the 2021 paint alongs will only be available for the end, until the end of the year. So you can just snatch those up on my website. Um, Sarah asked, how do you decide when to use glaze? So I didn't use glaze in this bright orange because I wanted it to be opaque. Glaze makes things transparent. So if I want it to be transparent, then I add some glaze in it. But if I want to keep the opacity of the paint, then I don't add any. So like my next step, I'm going to put more of a pastel orange in and I'm not going to put any glaze in. And because I'm going to have a little more white in there, it's going to be even more opaque and kind of pop against these colors. So I'm going to use the same color recipe that I was using, the Hansa Yellow Opaque and Pie Roll Red Light. Um, and now I'm going to put a little bit more white in there. And so this is going to be more of a pastel, um, more of a chalky orange that I'm mixing up here. All right. So this we will look for these brighter highlights in our piece. Um, looking like I'm starting off remember I said pick what's easy so I can tell up at the top here that's gonna be easy that's easy to find I can tell that this is going to be really bright so I'm gonna drop that in first and I'm building it up on top of some of that orange I've already put down which will make this pop a little bit more uh, because it's not sitting directly on top of the um, blue underpainting. It's got a little bit of a base, so it's going to stand out a little bit more. So we're just kind of taking steps towards the brighter tones. Still thinking about the shape of the pumpkin and laying my brush strokes down to kind of show that shape off. Thank you. 
And I'm staying, you know, real loose with the brush strokes inside the pumpkin, but when we're talking about the edge of it, I don't want that edge to look too rough. I want it to still look like a rounded form. So I am trying to make my brush strokes, you know, kind of pretty as I go around the outside edge of that pumpkin. You can see how the ones I've put down, those are really standing out compared to the other pumpkins because we got that bright highlight on there. And we're gonna go even brighter yet, um, but we're just working our way up towards that. It's like we're building steps, we're kind of building a gradient. And those of you that watch all of my paint alongs are probably annoyed with hearing me say the same thing again, but I feel like it's really important. Um, and we often have new people here. And so I like to kind of reiterate a lot of those key factors that I find are really important to making these dynamic uh, dimensional paintings that just really pack a lot of punch and, um, and depth to them. And these are things that you know I have learned over the years, and I feel like it's uh, it's exciting that I can share them with you because it's taken me a really long time to figure these things out, um, and I can maybe help you cut to the chase a little bit faster uh, with some of these techniques and and just the thought process behind them. I find that the more um, teaching I do, and where I really have to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, I actually learned myself about why I did it rather than just naturally doing it. When I actually have to um, explain a little bit of the purpose, it makes me dig a little deeper and think about my intentions when I'm doing different colors and different brush strokes. It's good for me. after we do this highlight I'm going to put some of those highlights on the stems because I'd like to get some of those in we're getting close to the end of our demo I always try to squeeze out as much as I can at the very end try to make it at least come together feel somewhat finished in our one hour of time that we have I know it goes by quick. I know for some of you, um, you know, it's a struggle to, to keep up and that's why I encourage you, you know, watch it live and then paint it at your own pace later. But I do think there's a lot of value in trying to go as quick, a little bit quicker. I shouldn't say as quick as you can, but trying to go a little bit quicker uh, because it helps you to not overthink everything, to just, lay the color down and move on and maybe not overwork some areas um, so I think that that's helpful and that's part of how I learned how to paint this way it was just by being in the moment and um, you know not trying to put everything in but only trying to put down the things that I felt were the most important to make the painting feel like it's coming together You know, this is kind of busy back here, and I think I'm just gonna kind of leave that out. I'm not gonna put a bunch of orange in there. Um, so I think it's too much. Okay, so I mentioned how we're gonna do some highlights on the stems. So I'm gonna clean off my brush. And I'm going to make kind of a minty green, um, and I'm going to make that from phthalo green blue shade and some titanium white. Ooh, I got a little too much water in there. I didn't really want that to be watery. I'm gonna dry my brush off and go somewhere else. Okay, 
Phthalo green blue shade. Ooh, that was a lot. And titanium white. And I'm going to put um, a little bit of yellow in there. I'm going to green it up just a little bit more. And then I think I want to dull it down just a little bit as well. So I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin crimson in there. We don't want it to be quite so intense. Maybe put a little more yellow in. All right, and then I'm going to drop a little glaze in there. This isn't going to be the brightest highlight on the stems. This is just going to be kind of our mid-tone highlight. So I've got a little bit of that down at the base of this. We've got, I'm going to put a little bit there. A little on the edge there. This one I mentioned is not as dark. So we're going to fill it in a little bit more with this kind of minty green. I'm going to drop a stem in there. The background is a little wild. Um, we've got this stem. Some of these stems, I'm probably going to put like more of a bluish tone in. Like some of these are really picking up some blue. But I just want to start off by putting a little bit of this kind of minty green color down. a little bit at the base of this one. These stems really are mostly dark. There's not a lot of color to see. Got a little bit on this. Let's see, did I get a little bit uh, all around? Drop a little more in. One more right there. I went a little heavy there, but that's okay. Okay, now I want to go brighter. Like, see how the tip of this one and the tip of this one are pretty bright? So I mentioned how I have to put my brightest highlights in the right places. So I'm going to do that. Um, and before I forget, if you are enjoying this demo, um, I would really love it if you would hit the share button right now and just share it to your um, Facebook page because uh, that really allows me to keep doing this. It helps new artists um, who might enjoy my instruction to find me. So please hit the share button and let me know in the comments if you do that so I can say thank you. Um, so this new bright green, same colors here. We've got phthalo green, Hansa yellow, and white. But now we're gonna use more white and put that, I'm gonna use a little more yellow. I don't think I'm gonna put any of that dulling alizarin crimson in there. I'm gonna let this be like a nice pop of bright yellowy green. And you can see we want this to really stand out. So we're gonna put it really bright and I'll probably even come back a little bit brighter. Um, but I just wanted to kind of identify those tips of the stems. Let's see, there's another little tip right there. I'm gonna come back with almost white and pop those out too. We'll put a little one right there. And right there. Where else? I'm gonna do one over here too, just for a little unity. Yeah, I like that. All right. Now, thank you, Allison, for sharing. Um, I'm gonna go back and brighten those really brightest ones one more time. So I'm gonna put more white in there. I'm just gonna dump like a lot of white in. It's gonna be almost Totally white with just a little bit of green in there. So this one's, you see how bright that is? That really stands out. This one too, over here. And anywhere else we wanna do it. Oh, this one in the background here is pretty bright, right there. Okay, I like that. Let's go in and put those shadows in. Remember I talked about those purple shadows? We haven't done that yet, and I think, I think that's gonna be really fun. I think that's gonna add some fun pop to it. Um, let's see, Kathy said, how do you do purple on top of gold base? Hey, that's what we're gonna do, Kathy. Thanks for asking. Um, okay, so we are going to make a purple. Um, normally, I would use my favorite permanent dark violet, but it is, no longer available right now anyways. So we're gonna make that using quinacridone magenta and a little bit of phthalo blue. 
those two colors will give us a nice purple. Um, but I want to lighten it a little bit, so I'm going to add some white in there as well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to put a little glaze in. So I've got quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue green shade, titanium white, and some glaze. Um, maybe a little more white. Okay, and then I'm going to drop this into those fun shadows. Uh, maybe do a little more magenta in there. Yeah, I like kind of seeing that fun glowing color bopping around in our shadows there. Yeah, that is fun. And that kind of unifies the um, underpainting with what we're putting on top because we had that magenta in the underpainting. We've got a little purple down here like it. I feel like we're missing some kind of pops of like a real reddish orange. So I think before I call it a night with this demo, I want to drop some of those in too. Yeah, that purple's fun. It just like livens up the shadows because they were all kind of dull with like just that brown tone. We want to make that come alive a little bit. All right, so let's now put in more of like a true like reddish uh, orange tone in just a few places. We don't wanna do it in too many places. So we will make that color um, using Pyrrole Red Light um, and Hansa Yellow Opaque. I need to get some new Hansa Yellow because my Hansa Yellow has green in it and that would ruin my orange if I put that in there. So no green in there. Hansa yellow opaque, pyro red light, and just a speck of white in there. But it's gonna be more of the pyro red um, than we were using before, because we really want this to pop. And I'm not gonna put any glaze in here either. I really want these little pops to show up. So I'm gonna lay it on top. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. And not everywhere, just looking for the areas in the painting where I see those kind of like intense glowing orange tones, that's where we're gonna lay this down. I like it. Oh, I went over my stem right there. I don't wanna do that. I want that stem to stay on top. There we go. These are kind of like just those glowing shadows in the background. Yeah. It's these little like intense pops at the end that um, really make it come together. This orange is kind of like working like my blue. Some of you guys that watch, that watch a lot of my demos and you've seen like my floral paintings, you know I like to put like that bright blue in at the end and it just like makes everything sparkle. Um, for me, this orange is doing it in this one, I think. It's like, it just makes it come together. But it's working because we've built up so much base for it with the other tones. but I wanna be careful not to do it in too many places because then it's gonna lose its oomph. So I'm, gonna, I'm squinting my eyes to see like if I need to keep going or you know, we're just gonna do some orange back here. We're not gonna really identify anything, we're just gonna do like an orange shape. Because it's kinda just fuzzy back there. We don't need to see every little thing. All right, okay, I think I'm just about done. The last thing that I want to do is to just really push some of those brightest highlights because I feel like in my image, they're almost white. And so I just wanna go a little bit brighter in a few places. I'm gonna clean my brush off and I'm gonna go back with the same color recipe but more white and I'm gonna make sure I get some fresh white because my white was getting a little bit muddy there. Um, no glaze in there though, so it's Hansa Yellow Opaque, 
high roll red light and white but just a lot more white now I might even move somewhere else and do it new spot on my palette so that I don't have to mix as much paint I can just take a little bit of my orange color and add white to it in a new spot so let's look for those very brightest areas yep that's it yeah that makes just those few little spots really stand out and then we're gonna be done with this demo anyways all right and if you're watching this as a replay and it's not tomorrow yet let me know um, if you've got any suggestions for what you want to do for the paint along next week we've had candy suggested and a skull and a jack-o'-lantern let me know if you have any great ideas because I'm gonna be deciding that tomorrow morning I send out an email um, every Friday with a link to the next week's paint along download so if you're on my email list you get those emails from me every Friday if you are not you can join my email list um, on my website alleykstudio.com and then you'll stay in touch with all these different opportunities okay a few more little pops of the brightest highlights and then we're gonna be done yeah this definitely makes those jump out squinting this one come out a little bit more this painting is kind of like a puzzle like there's just so much I could see this being a puzzle it being a really difficult puzzle to make all right oh Robin said how about a raven ooh that's fun I like that idea too all right I want to do just a few little like bluish tones on these two stems I know I said I was gonna be done. Okay, so the bluish tone, I'm gonna to use titanium white and a little bit of phthalo blue green shade. And I'm gonna do a little bit of phthalo green as well. So it's gonna be kinda of like a teal. I just wanna do this bright teal um, on a few stems. Like this stem right here, I like that and a little bit right there. I just wanna make those stems kind of pop out a little bit right there maybe. Yeah, that is a fun color. I love my teal. But this, you know, this stem right there, it needs to be a little darker. I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of dark green. I'm gonna do, um, and yours might not have that, but mine, I kind of lost it. I'm gonna do phthalo green, a little bit of alizarin crimson to dye it. Tame it down just a little bit, and I just need to like reshape that little bump right there. I just gotta bring that back. I lost it. And that's probably just mine. I just need to reshape this a little. Okay, we're gonna call this done, or I'm gonna overwork it. Um, all right. Thank you guys. And um, I apologize for the little bit of technical difficulty with on um, the screen freezing earlier, but hopefully you all got to watch the majority of this demo. Um, once again, I always appreciate it when you share it. So um, please go ahead and hit that share button. Um, really appreciate that. You can still get the download for the pumpkin paint along on my website as well as all of my other paint alongs. Be sure you grab those before the end of the year when they will disappear. All right, have a great night, you guys, um, and I will see you next week.